Hello, this is the materials video. Um, I'm going to go over all the things you'll need for this course. Um, I've tried to keep everything as inexpensive as possible and also easiest to find. Um, you'll be able to get everything you need at the big office um, supply store that starts with S and rhymes with Maples. Uh, office Depot is also another good place for that. So let's go over the stuff you'll need. Um, you might spend $20 and there's a good chance you already own um, several of the things that you'll be using. So the first item that you're going to need for this course is the sketchbook. Um, again, this is probably the most expensive thing that you'll need to buy. Um, this is Strathmore. It doesn't have to be this, this brand necessarily. It doesn't have to have 100 pages, but at least 50. So uh, um, 50 to 100 is fine. 30 won't work. It has to be at least 50 pages, and it has to be 8.5 by 11 inches or larger. Uh, and the reason for that is I'm going to be providing a number of templates that you'll be putting beneath and then uh, tracing shapes um, and then working on the tracing um, for a couple of the exercises and also it's also to be able to check some of your uh, um, drawings later as well so um, you can see through the paper to a certain extent. Um, the reason you have to use a sketchbook um, is the paper quality is a little bit better it's about twice as thick as photocopy paper also there is a bit of a surface to the paper for the graphite to hold on to that's called tooth so again, this is probably the most expensive um, purchase for this course. Um, additionally, um, you're obviously going to need pencils. Um, you're going to be using these very inexpensive um, mechanical pencils. Uh, um, these are 0.9 millimeter. Um, it can be any, any size, uh, um, 0 0.9, 0 0.7, or 0 0.5. Um, to, you cannot use wooden pencils for this course just because the uh, um, point uh, disappears too quickly on the wooden pencils um, and, and, and also you get different uh, um, types of drawings with those. So we're going to be doing very specific exercises um, that require you to use a mechanical pencil. Um, they're not expensive and you'll be able to get these anywhere and you probably have a bunch already. Um, you'll also need to have a, a pen uh, that can make uh, small dots or thick black lines. Um, this one in particular is um, a couple bucks and you probably have something like this. It doesn't necessarily have to be this brand or this style, but um, something that again that can make small dots and thick black lines. And we're going to be doing a couple exercises that you're going to need to be able to do both of those. Um, so um, you can use the ultra fine Sharpie. Um, the only problem with this is that the ink in here is... Uh, um, a little thinner so what will tend to happen is that it will bleed through to the other side so if you do use this you have to remember to put a sheet of paper otherwise it will go down through the next page uh, and it will stay in that page so I'm going to put this here um, just as protection and then I can draw on this and then you'll see that it does go through, it stops there, but it doesn't get over to the next page. So if you're going to use a Sharpie, that's fine. You just have to remember to put a, a blank sheet of paper underneath there just to protect the page um, underneath. Um, so after your pencils and pens, we have to talk about erasers. Um, we have these things called vinyl erasers or uh, kneaded erasers. A kneaded eraser um, looks like a piece of chewing gum. Um, they'll come in a plastic wrapper like this. Um, after you use them a while, it'll turn into a glob like this. And the reason they call it knead it is because, with a K in front, um, because you knead it like dough to kind of reactivate it. Um, and we'll be talking about how to use this in the first exercise. Um, you can pick these things up for a dollar. Uh, not expensive. And then the white erasers, the vinyl erasers, um, you can get them in this kind of beige color or in the white color. Either one's fine. Um, try to stay away from the pink erasers. The pink erasers will sometimes stain the paper pink. Um, they have an abrasive in there as well, the pink erasers, to lift up ink and that will damage the fibers of the paper. So you want to stay away from those pink erasers. So the beige one or the white one is fine. Um, sometimes in the cheap, like in the dollar stores, you'll see these types of erasers. Again, that's the vinyl eraser. Um, these are fine. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about is when you do an erasure, you'll get um, like black 
gunk, and that's the grease from your fingers, and the graphite accumulates on there. So what I do is I'll usually do this on a piece of surface. I'll, I'll erase that off so it gets nice and clean before I work on my drawing. Um, if you get grease in there from your hand or from whatever, um, that will get into the fibers of your paper, and you'll never get it off. So always try to work with a clean eraser when you start. So these are some of the erasers you can do uh, use. Um, this is all you need, just two. If you have other ones, that's fine. Um, the next thing you need is something um, that I'm sure you probably have, is a ruler. Uh, one of the funny things I hear from students is that um, they don't know how to draw a straight line, and I tell them I don't know either until I have a ruler, and then I can make straight lines just fine. Um, don't, don't worry about drawing straight lines. Um, you don't see straight lines in nature too often, so um, it, it, it's, it's not necessary. And if you need to make a straight line, use a tool. Um, I don't know any, any artist that, that uses uh, um, freehand giant straight lines. They, they tend to use a straight edge to get the line. Um, so uh, with the pencils, you'll see um, part of the drawing technique is you're not holding a pencil like you're writing. Um, you'll be holding the pencil a little differently. And I'm just going to throw down some graphite on the paper just to show you the texture of the paper. Um, you can see, uh, um, and I'll do scans um, throughout the course of fine detail so you can actually see the tooth, the grain of the paper, um, and the way it works. Um, for the erasers that I was talking about earlier, uh, um, you're going to need something um, that you definitely have. It doesn't have to be an index card, but just any kind of sturdy uh, piece of cardboard or index card or postcard, uh, advertisement. Um, you're going to use that as an erasing shield. So if I need to lift that off and get a nice straight line, I can do that and I can get a nice edge to it. Now, I was talking about the kneaded eraser earlier, um, and I'm going to go into much more detail with this. Um, you can use this to make subtle adjustments to the graphite. So let's say I wanted to lighten it up a little bit. I'm just going to tap into it a little bit. And you can see there's still some of the graphite there, but most of the graphite is on the eraser. Um, also, I'm going to be talking later on in the course about how to do fine detail erasing. And if I need to do like a little edge, I can go in there and make subtle adjustments to lighten up pieces. Um, also, I'm going to show you how to cut um, these erasers with a, a knife or a razor blade. So if you want to get into do little fine detail work with the eraser, you'll be able to do that as well. So those are the materials. Um, for some of the supplemental exercises that are optional, I'll show you some of the other materials that you can play around with, but they're not necessary. It's just, just extra things I want to th throw in there, like ballpoint pens and some of the larger Sharpies um, and just some of the other materials that you might have in your home. So uh, th that's all you need. Um, let's go on to the first exercise. Thank you.